CEO and founder of Sukumal.com, what we do is we are an aggregator site and we compare banks, mortgages, credit cards, personal loans, and bank accounts. And in the last two years, we've actually moved into insurance, which means we actually compare different, you can get up to 15 different car insurance quotes and complete the, um, the purchase and the payment online. Very quickly, unless you wanted more, but I think it's good. Thank you very much. Please. We're this region's second fastest uh, uh, growing fashion retail uh, outlet. We sell fast fashion online. We've uh, expanded into international markets recently uh, and with big ambitions and big growth uh, goals ahead of us this year. Please. Thank you. Enrique? Um, well, thank you for inviting us. That, that's the first thing. And uh, so my name is Enrique Dubos. I am the director of product marketing for Akamai. Um, Akamai is the, um, we are the largest cloud delivery platform. Um, what we do essentially is we work with customers around the world, m many of them in the, in the retail sector to, to make sure that their applications, websites, and, and content gets delivered in a fast, reliable way to, to end customers, so end users. So that's our uh, core business. We focus on things such as performance, security, and making sure that those experiences online are, are the best ones that can be delivered to, to their end users. So that's essentially our business. Thank you. Now we have two marketplaces, two brands here, and we have one technology provider here, which will give us really interesting angles at this panel. The first question I would like to ask you, Amberine, can you please explain the business model of a marketplace and also how it allows you to enhance a revenue opportunity but with a very little risk? Um, so it, uh, I would say as a description, an online marketplace is where you bring buyers and consumers together. Um, and our business model is pretty much this. On the banking side, we've got a lead generation model, which means we get the customer details. If you're interested in Citibank, HSBC, whatever bank you, you want, we'll connect you with a bank, but that's where we stop. So that's one side of the model. Um, the different business model, which is still an online marketplace, is where we actually hold the customer's hand all the way to the end. So on the insurance product, however, it is still an online marketplace because we represent around 18 different insurance companies. You can get a quote from all of them, depending on you and your car and then your age, all the other variables. But on this model, we actually accept the payment and we fulfill the transaction like an e-commerce site. So. There is two different business models under one online marketplace umbrella. Um, and in terms of actually generating revenue, the lead model, great. You get uh, an amount of money for every single lead you send to the bank, but that's not the most sustainable business model to have. That, the lead model generally is very susceptible to recession, to marketing budgets. And as we all know, marketing budgets in different banks or different companies goes up and down, depending on the economy and depending yes. on the new chief marketing officer who turns up. Um, whereas the, the, the insurance model is a commission-based model, which is a cost per acquisition. Now, the, the reason this is a lot more interesting, a lot more scalable, I mean, the business has grown 800% just in the last 12 months. And the reason this is a lot more, for us anyway, much more scalable is because on that model, we hold the customers and we complete the transaction and we get paid per closed customer, but I don't depend on anybody else to close this particular customer. I take it on myself. So my conversion rates is all for me. All my KPIs all the way through sale is on me. I'm not depending on anyone. And that's scalable just because there's no marketing budgets attached to it. As many insurance policies I can send to an insurance company, they're taking it. Yeah. Whereas from the banks, it's more, well, I don't know if I have the budget for X many leads and they're not customers, they're leads. So then they have to go and fulfill and convert them into customers. And which business model is the bigger one for you? Well, we started, we grew 300% year on year for the first four years of the business under the banking model. Now we've moved over to insurance. Insurance is already 50% of our revenues oh, today. Wow. So it's picked up very, very well. Um, I mean, so be it as well. There is a huge need for transparency and, and I think that's what we stand for very much is is and one of the you know one of the key three factors of a successful online marketplace is trust. Do you do you trust this particular client to actually fulfill whatever you need? Are the products up to scratch? Um, and is this service? Am I going to get the service and convenience I'm looking for? And that's exactly what we do. Um, we're very strong on the small print, so we will not be hiding terms and conditions like most other companies do. So that trust level is what we've built the last five years through the banking business, into the, which actually got translated into insurance business. So um, yes, I mean, revenues are going well, I guess, um, but from a two very, very different business model. Nice. That sounds amazing. Thank you. 
Junaid, uh, in the age of marketplaces, what opportunities do marketplaces actually offer the retailers and the brands of all sizes and also here in the region? Well, uh, as uh, Amreen touched upon uh, trust, when, when smaller brands come into the play, uh, they, they, they don't really translate well online immediately. So if you look at it from their perspective, uh, when they're going into a marketplace, they carry the value and the brand trust of that uh, marketplace with them, especially in curated uh, marketplaces uh, where brands uh, that are being pushed are, uh, are authenticated and fulfilled by the marketplace themselves. Uh, so it's it's a great opportunity for smaller brands. We've recently uh, expanded into international markets, and some of the very small brands have done exceptionally well in places like Australia, Ireland, Indonesia. They're getting orders from Vietnam. So so that's that's one of the opportunities for the smaller brands. And for larger brands, obviously, uh, they they have their KPIs for their regions, uh, and the more uh, data-driven approach uh, that. Uh, online marketplaces use uh, the more they benefit uh, as well. So it's it's a win-win for both sides of the retailers and uh, and uh, smaller brands. So that is fantastic. Yeah. Thank you, Enrique. A question for you. Now let's look at your side of the spectrum. Could you please elaborate on the importance of delivering content and e-commerce experiences with consistency, quality, and security? And also, how can you ensure this? on every single touch point on the way. OK, so let's start with um, why those three are, are relevant. Um, I think it's, it's all about the user experience. Um, great user experience, they do drive revenue. They do drive more um, customer engagement, more application installs. Um, I tend to, I like to usually talk about Starbucks, for instance. And Starbucks has a it's an amazing uh, mobile application. Um, and for Starbucks, 30%, that's 30% of all the revenues, not only online, all the revenues, comes through the mobile app. And that's because they have a great user experience. It knows who you are. It knows what you like to order. It orders it for you before you even get to the, to the coffee shop. So if I like cappuccino and I like a, um, um, a croissant, even before I get there, my order is ready. I go, I pick it up, and I go. Um, that's, that to me is, is all about the, the, the user, it's all about the user experience. Uh, the thing is, performance, like you said, and, and reliability and security, they do have a direct impact on, on that user experience. Um, there are tons of studies that talk about the fact that the longer it takes for an application or a page to load, you're going to have uh, higher bounce rates and lower conversion rates. Because at the end of the day, like, like she was saying, it's very important. What matters at the end is those online KPIs. Is how do I maximize my online revenue? If user experience is impacting that, then you need to look into that and see how performance can actually be improved to deliver those, those experiences. Um, they have to be reliable because you don't know when you're going to have a, a peak uh, amount of traffic coming to your website or to your application. Can you sustain that, that load and can you deliver that application to the end user? And, and the last one, security. Um, it doesn't matter how great your application is, how fast it is, um, how cool it is. If it's down because of a DDoS attack or because your data has been compromised, it's worth nothing. So performance and security, security and performance has always need to be into the same sort of conversation. Um, the, the second question, which was, how do you ensure that across um, different, how do you ensure that consistency? Uh, there, there has to be the same experience for an end user, whether it's online or offline. The whole of channel conversation is providing that consistency of buying experiences online. I should be able to go from my tablet to my desktop to my mobile to the uh, in-store uh, through the same experience without losing the, the, the customer journey. So it's very, very important to actually know the user, understand what they like, understand when they would like it, and deliver on those promises, and deliver the right content to the right device. That, to me, is the key, the key aspect. Thank you. And as you said, it's really all about consistency. And that is even more important when you start going international. And Junaid, you just mentioned Australia, Indonesia. What is your strategy? You started regional, but are you expanding now? Yes, we are. Uh, 
uh, and it's it's all to do with demand. So uh, when when we look at international markets, there is a lot of demand for products. For example, we uh, we have a very large selection of modest wear, uh, and some of the very popular brands uh, locally uh, don't exist anywhere else in the world. And we saw people calling in uh, uh, from UK, from Ireland, and from other parts of the world, and they were demanding those uh, products be delivered to them internationally. And uh, then we you know like expanded into th those markets and help those brands uh, reach more uh, more of their uh, target market internationally and it worked when when it comes to security and trust those those uh, those same brands would not be as uh, uh, they would not be as efficient uh, in going online as we are taking them online uh, through a marketplace uh, if they were doing it themselves. Uh, performance, as he uh, uh, rightly mentioned, is is key. People are frustrated with uh, experience and security. Uh, when we push out uh, content to the relevant markets, we know who we're pushing out content to, how we're pushing them uh, uh, that content, and we uh, make sure that their transactions online are absolutely secure, with a lot of investment, of course, but uh, which those smaller brands uh, typically can't uh, can't do. Ah, yes. that is incredible, helping the brands. Question for you, Amberin, and your business model is more complex even. What is your view and what is your strategy on expansion, especially when it comes to markets and then going international? Um, so there, there are two ways you can expand, right? It's either geography or product line, and we're doing both at the moment. We just got our license into Bahrain. So we're starting in Bahrain, Saudi is still pending, we're still waiting for the license. That will probably take a bit of more time. Um, but I think the interesting point is, do you actually go to Saudi and try and expand in a much bigger market, different language, and with all the operational um, challenges that you may have, or what we've decided is, okay, well, let's go to Bahrain, a smaller market, similar to UAE, let's test that it works, and then going through. Because our expansion is not taking products and reselling them, it's we're actually selling a financial product. Yes. Um, so we need to actually partner up one with a broker. Number two is we need to actually have an API integration with each and every insurance company that, hap that happens to be in there. There's a whole legal and compliance aspect to it as well. Um, but the interesting part for me of, of international expansion or the stuff that you just mentioned and, and getting providers on board, it's a bit of a chicken and egg, right? And online marketplaces, there's a challenge of bringing customers in, but then the customers won't come in if you don't have enough suppliers. But then if you don't have enough customers, the suppliers are not interested in, in, in coming on to you. Now we're lucky that we've got insurance companies just calling up and say, hey, can we be on your platform? Two years ago, when I started the insurance business, it was not even like this. I, I tried to start the insurance business four years ago, mm -hmm. um, and that was just, you know, door closed in my face, going not interested, market was going crazy, the, the margins in the insurance business were very, very, very small. It was not something these guys were thinking about. The whole digital aspect of distribution has picked up quite a lot. I mean, today worldwide, 40% of all online sales are done through aggregators um, and online marketplaces. So it's taken, a, and I think the region is actually catching up very, very, very quickly on that. But the interesting aspect to it for me was always, who do we pick and choose to come onto the site? Because, you know, gentlemen there, you come on Sokol Mal, you put all your details in, you get your car insurance, super happy, great service. And the, team, the day it comes down for you to put a claim, the claim gets rejected. Does that come back to us or does that go back to... So, so there is this concept of who do you accept on the platform to start with because the last thing you want is then the reputation of your platform is tagged to the service of the supplier. So curating that list of suppliers or insurance companies or products. And so I'm interested to hear from you from a, you know, you take on very, very small retailers, but do they actually provide the service at the back of it? Because I'm guessing they're the ones who do deliver the products to the house. When I remember 10 years ago, I used to do Sook.com, absolute nightmare. Yeah. The product wouldn't turn up for another week. Yes. Um, and as I got to know them a lot better and, you know, um, then you discover it's exactly that story. When you're very small, you start by taking and getting a marketplace in, and now they're curating, and now Sook.com do their own delivery, and they get their own stocks. Completely changes, and now I'm in the service. I order something in the morning, I get it at night. Um, and so I think it, a lot of it depends on also at what stage of the industry you're at. So if you look at eBay at the time, decided to come very strict, very curated, we're only going to allow these people, and then Amazon took over and opened it up to everybody. Yeah. And so then they opened up to a bit, and it came to a point where it became so big, now they had to start going back to the curating because they had to build that trust again. 
in 15 years ago, people were just happy to be able to do it online, whether it looked nice or not, whether it was complicated or not. They're just happy to have the product delivered to them. So I think there is a discussion around at the time of the market development of where you're at, there's a time of what size of the business are you in and what you can afford and where does curating suppliers um, become important and when the customer experience become important. So it varies throughout the, the life cycle. So yeah, so coming back to the actual original question, the, 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 the expansion for us is both from a product line, we're launching, we just launched health. Uh, we launch, we're launching travel in June. And re yesterday, actually, we just launched cash payment. Interesting enough, you would all think that you know, credit card is the way to go. We've been doing credit card for two years, and the amount of requests we've had for cash payment of insurance is really? huge. So we just launched with UE Exchange, Customers can come online, buy their insurance policy, take a code, go to any UAE exchange branches, and pay for the insurance policy there. The moment they pay, their policy gets issued immediately. So the cash payment is a huge part. I mean, 70% of the region is still on cash on delivery. So is cash still king? And that all forms part of our expansion. So interesting enough, part of our expansion is expanding as well the methods of payment. Of that is payment. really interesting. I would have not thought that people really pay cash still for insurances. But I would like to go back to what you said, and Junaid, if you would mention, I would yes, mind absolutely. answering. Uh, I'm, I'm bringing you touched upon the, uh, the, the most important aspect of uh, marketplaces. It's, it's the user, it's the customer. The customer is the only boss that we have. Uh, and the suppliers uh, that we curate, uh, we have so many suppliers coming into us, and uh, and the, the the due diligence that we do with the with the kind of servicing that they would provide us uh, is is what the impact on our business is. The customer will always get a great service from our brand, and that's our responsibility. If the supplier backs out on something, whether it's a large supplier or a small supplier, does not uh, really matter. They would get the returns, they would get the exchanges, they would get every single thing that they would expect from the largest brand on earth from us. That's that's what uh, the one of the key benefits of uh, you know like dealing with the curated marketplace is. Uh, we sort out the best suppliers. We authenticate the products. We authenticate uh, the you know like the mechanisms by which they would be delivered. We uh, we consolidate everything in house and then push that service out to the to the to the market. And uh, uh, that's that's uh, that's something that's priceless for the customer. That adds a lot of value there. Well done, because one of the big challenges we have is we can't control whether the claim gets rejected or accepted eventually. So, I, yeah. We, we take that on okay. full front. So if there is a claim that gets rejected by a, a very large brand even, uh, it's uh, ours to, to take. Because we have a QA process. Every single product, when it comes, walks into our door, it, it gets QA'd, uh, QC'd, uh, gets uh, stocked, shelled. Everything that's going out gets QC'd again, so there is no store damage. Everything that comes back, even if there is, you know, like uh, damage while uh, shipping the product, you know, the, it's, a, it's a messy job. Uh, it's ours. It's not uh, someone else's. So uh, that's uh, the thing. One of the things that you touched was uh, uh, that 70% of the market uh, here is uh, cash and deliveries. Uh, w from what we see, it's more of 90% uh, regionally. Uh, Kuwait, uh, Iraq, Saudi here, it's 90% cash and delivery here for e-commerce. And I'm, uh, there are a few gentlemen here who would uh, second that uh, uh, for this region for the longest time. We've been uh, trying to uh, push this market, incentive incentivize it into being a better uh, online payment, uh, you know, market, but uh, that's still uh, not the case. It's a 90% uh, cash on delivery market. Yeah, cash on delivery is still a topic. And I would like to actually give the last question to you, Enrique. Unfortunately, we only have a few minutes left. In today's global marketplace, how can you differentiate yourself? How can you make a difference? Um, well, I think one of the challenges when, when you guys expand is it's great that you expand, but then you open yourself to a lot of competition, right? So, and, and, and nowadays, competitors can come from anywhere in the, in the globe, and, and you, need to be, you need to be fast, but fast not in the sense of fast loading or fast performance, but fast reaction, fast time to market. And I think it's all about the data, to be honest. It's, um, it's understanding your users. 
real user understanding, real user monitoring, knowing what they want, how they want it, so you can create a more differentiated, engaging app than your competitor. Um, how you can actually automate control or, or control the the content that you deliver to those to those uh, users, uh, whether it's images, whether it's um, third-party content that might be affecting your application, and how do you make sure that those those sort of content is is relevant to that particular moment of time for that user that is actually be different from your existing competitor. Um, I think it's also fast time to market in the search in the sense of automation and and DevOps because you're going to be releasing a lot of new stuff and new features uh, very frequently in order to keep up and in order to be one step ahead of your competitor. So it has to be automated. It has to be simple. Uh, um, you have a development background and you know that 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 development, deployment, Q and A, and so forth, it has to have has to happen fast, and it has to be rolled out very quickly and globally. So, data, data analysis, controlling the right content to the right user to the right device, uh, fast time to market, those are the sort of sort of the um, the ingredients in the recipe to actually uh, be be different, be engaging, and be one step of your competitor, and that's that's how you're going to win in, in the global marketplace. Otherwise, you're going to be one step behind, and you're going to have to always try to catch up, and, and it's not easy. It's not easy. Yeah, you're absolutely right. You don't want to be one step behind. You want to be one step ahead of the game. Unfortunately, with this beautiful statement, we have to wrap up our panel discussion. I have a feeling we could go on for a lot longer, but if you guys want, we don't have time for questions now, so please feel free to have a chat to these ladies and gentlemen afterwards outside. So thank you very much for joining us here. Thank it you. It was lovely having you on stage. Thank you very much. Please give a round of applause for Amberin, Janaid, and Enrique. Thank you very much for joining us on stage. Thank you, Enrique.